19-year-old Harry Dunn, who died after being hit by a car while riding his motorbike. Anne Sikoulis, the wife of an American diplomat, was driving the car and fled to the US, claiming diplomatic immunity. Harry's mum, Charlotte, uh, joins us now. She continues her fight for justice and was due to come face to face with Anne this week. Um, it's been a tough few days, few weeks and indeed months, Charlotte. And I know this is a particularly tough time of the year for you and your family mm. coming up to the anniversary. Um, but like we say, you were due to meet Anne face to face for the first time this week. That in fact now has been postponed. Yeah. So where, where do we stand with everything now, Charlotte? What are the next steps? Um, unfortunately, I can't go into too much detail. I'm not permitted to do so, but as much as I'd tried building myself up to be in the same room as her, it was obviously still going to be the most difficult thing cool. that myself and Tim would have ever had to have done, apart from when we had to leave Harry the night we lost him. I don't know if you can ever prepare yourself to be in the same room, but I would have done it, mm -hmm. you know, if the opportunity had have arisen, that that it was something that we could have seen through. But at the same time, you know, the amount of relief that I felt when we suddenly out of the blue, literally hours from getting on the plane last week, everything changed. Um, the relief of not having to travel again during the pandemic. You know, we've already been over there twice in the last few months. You always fear, even when you feel well, that your PCR test is gonna come back positive. And this is not the week that I would have wanted to have been away from my, my family and friends. So a lot of relief came with the frustration. Mm -hmm. uh, undoubtedly though, that day will happen at some point. We're waiting to find out more. We're in the hands of our US lawyers who we fully trust and believe in. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how things go. I mean, it was reported back in June that Boris Johnson had spoken to President Joe Biden at the G7 mm -hmm. summit. He spoke about your family's plight. He spoke about Harry. That in some way has given you a little bit of hope because that was a step that hadn't happened prior to that. Yeah, of course. You know, we're very confident now. Um, it's no longer a question of if she'll face the UK jurisdiction. It's a matter of when mm -hmm. and how. So we are waiting with bated breath to hear from the Crown Prosecution Service to what the next steps may be. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes every bit of strength, Charlotte, to, to battle governments here. That's not an easy task for anybody. No. And that's exactly what you have been doing. And it certainly doesn't leave you any time to heal or grieve or, or have a moment at all, just to take a breath. Um, how have you been coping in the past couple of months? Uh, I had to go and get help. You know, it, it got to the point back in January, February, where I realised that I couldn't go on the way I was anymore. You know, I'd, I was losing strength at the rate of knots. I wasn't sleeping, um, had gone back to not being able to eat properly, being prompted of, of when to eat. I was literally running out of steam. Um, my mood swings were terrible. Um, thankfully, working for the, the family doctors that I had done for such a long time, up until last year, I felt comfortable with finally reaching out for help. Um, I have a wonderful doctor, a wonderful team there. And all through COVID, they have worked so hard and they've really helped me. I've managed to get back on my feet. I religiously take my medication every day and it has given me some strength back. Mm -hmm. It's given me the strength to get back outside, um, a little bit more confidence about leaving home other than just for Harry work, as I call it, um, getting out with my dogs and walking more. and. That's, that's invaluable, mm -hmm. absolutely invaluable. So, you know, I'd urge anyone, anyone who's struggling with anything to just, just don't, don't keep it to yourself, you know, talk. Yeah, it's, and, it's and helped me a lot. But it was that sharing that was the difficult part because there's just, yeah. there's just so much emotion that it's almost difficult to know where to start with the explanation of how you feel. Yeah, it's mixed emotions all the time, you know, and you can be on a, 
massive hamster wheel one day, you know, where you force yourself to get up out of bed every morning, you know, and there are days where you just keep going. You know, you hoover more than once, you'll zooflora everything down more than once. You know, you, you look for things to do around the house constantly because you don't want that time to sit and think. Yeah. But actually, do you know what? The more you do that and the longer you continue to do that, the worse you become mm -hmm. because you just get to the point where when you do get an hour of your day, your mind then goes into overdrive mm -hmm. or you start crying and you, you can't control the stopping of it. Yeah. So yeah. it's important get to get that. help. Um, Friday's going to be a tough day as it was last year when we spoke actually, Charlotte. Yeah. Um, uh, you are blessed with a, a wonderful family and friends around you, which is a you know, huge support network and you've supported each other because you're all feeling this, obviously. Um, what are your, your plans for Friday? Will it be a, a family affair again? And Probably. Just, just to try and to remember in the best possible way that you can? Yeah. I mean, you know, this time last year, it was horrific. Um, every day is still painful. Every day you still don't know what you're going to be like. Mm -hmm. um, the dates, obviously more poignant as our Christmases and birthdays, but the true reality is, is that every day you have to wake up and find the strength to put one foot in front of the other mm -hmm. and walk in Harry's footsteps at home. And every day is a painful reminder that he's no longer here. But this time last year, we thought we had learnt a lot. Being another year on, we're even more knowledgeable. You know, bit by bit, we are piecing together everything that we need to know. And that helps. It helps me feel like we are building that legacy for him. Mm -hmm. You know, the truth will out because we're getting closer and closer every day. Mm -hmm. So when I say literally take it, take it day by day and hour by hour, that's what we're doing. And I've not really put too much thought into two days from now. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to take it as it comes. And if, if family come round, they come round. If I feel strong enough to go out, then that's what I'll do. But you can't plan ahead no. because you really have no idea how you're going to be feeling. On that moment, I, can, I think anyone that's gone through any kind of grief will understand exactly what you've just said there, yeah. Charlotte. And of course, you know, you've got, you've got Niall there as well, who, who needs mum and Absolutely. you know he has his life as well here and he's grieving in the way that you are too but it's you, you feel like you know they're, they're, you have to stay strong don't you for yeah. each other yeah you have to there, there's no other option you know I've I've seen people that have never come through losing a child you know I've seen people whose lives are and spoken to people whose lives have never never recovered and I've got Niall and I've got the siblings and you have to stay strong you know they've got their whole lives ahead of them you know I'm effectively halfway through mine I do feel a responsibility of showing all of them that life can be lived again even though I'm still not quite sure myself yet on how to rebuild and where to start, I'm absolutely determined that, mm -hmm. that I will and we will as a family. Mm -hmm. Niall's got the whole of his life ahead of him. He's 21, you know, so we have to show him the way forward. Mm -hmm. And that it's, does give you some strength, doesn't it? Of that, course that, it that, does. That is another purpose, really. Yeah, the, the love you have for your children is like no other. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that you could ever compare it to. It's not like the love that you have for your parents as much as you love them and you can never imagine wanting to live your life without them. The love that you have for your children is just indescribable, isn't it? Yes, it is. Unless you know what it's like. So that love keeps you going. Well, Charlotte, thank you as always. Um, you, uh, you just speak so incredibly just with emotion and I think everyone sitting at home will, will feel for you this week and, and particularly on Friday. Please send all of our love to everybody Thank back you. home, won't you? And, and certainly in the weeks and months coming up and it's not going to be easy, but 
you're the strongest woman we'll I've ever met, Charlotte. So thank you so much for joining thank us this you. morning. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.